Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while since I've done a video, so I'm glad to do a video today. Um, had a lot of different things I wanted to um, talk about that were new, but I had done a couple videos before and um, they didn't get uploaded, and so I'm gonna redo those topics. And um, so I wanted to talk about what's referred to as the spell of Isis um, and uh, our um, time energy currency that we're living off of right now in this uh, matrix or, um, you know, hologram or holodeck or, you know, simulation or whatever you want to call it. So <clears throat> basically, um, it's really easy when you start to understand what currency is in this realm um, with your with your job, with everything, um, you think about it. Um, okay, so what is currency? I mean, we call it currency. We call money currency, and currency is electricity, and we know that it's a current, something that flows, you know? So um, the currency is actually your energy, which is your inner chi. Your energy is your inner chi. That's like your primordial chi, your prenatal chi, your spiritual chi, all these, you know, your chakras, all these different things. You know, some people are born, you know, with more than others and different things like that. And you know these people, they're worth a lot of money, right? Because their energy or their inner chi, their currency is actually higher. So they're worth more money. You have to put more money into it. So the spell of Isis, you know, that the Isis symbol is the dollar sign. Um, and that's, it's just, you know, compressed. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, different lore, you know, that Nana you know, Nana is one that created currency and all these different things like that. Um, so, um, and, and so when you kind of understand the demiurge and you understand the matrix and uh, the, the system that we live in, you kind of can start to understand how this system actually lives off of our soul energy. Because um, it's actually not as metaphysical or not as supernatural as people think. It's actually pretty simple. It's pretty scientific. It's pretty simple. Um, this whole realm that we're in is being run off our soul energy. And you can see that. I mean, and soul means um, your light, your sun, your the one. That's why when we turn a light on, we turn it on because it's the one, it's the soul, it's the light. Okay. So you have to understand that that, that soul is actually powering this universe, this whole system that we're living in. How? And that is how, is that you're actually trading your inner chi for currency to spend within this realm and so however much your chi is worth that's how much you have to, you're gonna have to put in that's your time it's what they say time is money because your time is your energy however much you you know you put into something that's what it's worth you know if I make a hundred dollars an hour then you know that's what that's what my time is worth if I'm very you know if I'm so say if it's like you know I don't know an industrial job or assembly line job and you know that's how it works so anyways that kind of give you an idea someone who's slower maybe can't think of better ways to do things can improve uh you know excel or, or anything like that maybe they're worth twenty dollars an hour you know what i'm saying because they're slower they're not getting you're not getting as much from them because they just don't they don't have the the resources the inside resources on the outside because the key to success is never resources it's resourcefulness and i think most people that most people that understand um success understand that you know people who are creative resourceful they find away you know no matter what you find a way to do it and that's your um and i'll get into more of this you know we're talking about <clears throat> uh, money time currency so while we're talking on that we'll just talk on um kind of like um the the manifestation that we talk about like how do you take your energy and put it into the cube and create your own egg and ha hatch the egg and manifest things in the matrix because we see these things happen we see things manifest in the matrix through prayer i mean you see people with the bumper stickers prayer changes things do you think they just stuck that bumper sticker on their car or do you think that maybe they had an experience and so that's why they choose to put that bumper sticker i mean i know i i've i've personally myself seen prayer change things in dramatic ways and then have heard other stories people that i know are telling the truth and so um, we know that something changes and to me um, when we pray I almost think of it like as time travel because sometimes when I, I look at the, the prayers that I prayed I didn't know Christians will automatically revert back to like well God knows what you need before you need but yes but that's because time doesn't exist <laughs> get it you know you, that's what you gotta kind of understand and so um, like when okay for instance this is a for instance uh when my dad was in a home of course he had been a uh, grew up my dad was a crackhead um uh, on and off but pretty much consistently and um when i had my daughter um he wasn't allowed to see her so he went into a rehab um and, and got clean he's been clean ever since been i don't know gosh it's been 15 years so my daughter's 15. so um but while he was in this man's home you know he'd already got, kind of got gone through the sobriety stuff and they're walking one day and he says you know god's gonna um He's like, oh, I have this, is this, you know, asthma problem. And somebody said, well, why didn't you just heal him the asthma? But whatever it was, he was living in San Jose, and he was saying, you know, 
I just have like, um, the air here is just bothering me. And, um, and he's, you know, he was talking like that. And he said, you know what? I'm gonna have to give to God. God's gonna have to, cause I don't have any insurance. Da, 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 da. He was carrying on. And he said, you know, God's gonna have to take care of me, give me an inhaler, do something. And they turned the corner and literally like the, his prescription of inhaler was just sitting there in the middle of the road. And everyone stopped and was like, <laughs> this guy is so crazy. Right? So, um, and, and you think about things like that and it kind of twists your mind. You're like, wow. I mean, if, Guess that I mean the matrix like literally will manifest things so it's like you pray for something and then it happens Was it already going to happen or did you manifest it? And I, I really think that prayer is almost like a time travel like like when you pray it actually changes the past to alter the future and the present time that you're in for that to be um, unfolded or unveiled or whatever you want to call it and um, Another thing like you know with the with that manifestation within this world um, is um, You know motion equals emotion you hear people talk about <clears throat> the law of attraction well yeah, okay, the law of attraction is real, that's true, but what is it? What is it really? And what it is is your, your cerebral mechanism in your brain, um, and that is the same thing they used for guided missiles. It's a mechanism in the human brain, and it's like a sonar, it's like a heat-seeking um, technology, you know? So it's like, basically, as a good example is, say, let's say your friend gets a car, and now you see this car everywhere. The car was always there, but now it's in your paradigm. It's been put into your reality. You're, you're thinking about it. Your friend got this new car. Now you're seeing this car everywhere, but the car was always there before, but your brain has sought it out. Now that's like a really base level to explain it. But basically whatever you set your mind to achieve, your brain will figure it out. It will find a way. It's meant to. It's meant to do that. So that's why you have to see like the, the laws of attraction. Yes, but most people don't understand how to ask intelligently. And that's why I like, um, like you know, they say Tony Robbins. They got really mad because they invited him to like talk on the uh, laws of attraction or whatever. And he kind of like flipped it around and he was like, look, I mean, that's cool. If you want to say like, the, this is going to give me that, I'm going to get that. That's all fine and dandy, but motion equals emotion. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to figure out exactly what you need to do and ask intelligently, what do I need to do? If you say you want to be a millionaire but you want to lay on the beach all day i'm sorry but your map is not going to take you to your destination okay so you have to figure out what exactly do i need to do and that's what he calls like the rapid plan management which is the rpm so what do you do you basically figure out i mean every minute detail to the people that you need to call to the places that you need to visit to the research that you need to do to i mean to the supplies you need anything whatever it is you write down every little tiny thing and those are the things that you set out to to be attracting and pulling in to achieve your goal you can't just say i want to be this I want to do that I want this and then just expect it to come to you because you have you have to understand what to ask for you need to understand what it is and that's one of the things like when I started my business I had to say you know figure out I had to hone in on something that I was good I was very good at and then say like what do I want what do I want out of this what do I want to do and then you know every time I have to change and you know add more or do something else and I have to change it as well I have to you know go back and say what do I want to do exactly it's kind of like where I'm at now so um, I think it's important to understand the laws of attraction and that cerebral mechanism in your brain and the science behind it um, because a lot of people are just like putting stuff out there and, and then it doesn't manifest or it doesn't happen and you have to understand this why like the avatar phenomenon yeah there are avatars and they're here now and I, I do believe when they say that there have never been as many avatars walking the planet as right now is I do believe that just because I'm meeting people that they don't know what they are but I can I know what they are and I, I mean you can talk to them and you're like wow and some of them I meet people and they know who they are and they're like totally up with this and to find people like that in Visalia is very rare and so the avatars are being born they are here but I mean a lot of them are just there's they're, they're just sleeping or um, they've completely gone awry in the matrix I mean they just because it's just not made it's just it's just not made for those types of people all the time especially the the lower level avatars have a hard time and um, that's why a lot of them don't incarnate and that's why they incarnate together I believe to help each other so um but like everybody's like oh, i want to be an avatar i want to find out if i'm an avatar i want to find out if i'm you know an incarnate and i want to find out if i'm a goddess why why what for like there's all these people coming on the <laughs> youtube but they'll i mean they call me names and be like oh my god you think you're mary magdalene oh i'm so i pity you i mean like dude if you want that fucking title Go run with it, please do. I really am not gonna sit and argue about what mythical person I am with somebody. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. And like three or four people will come on my channel claiming to all be this person and wanna fight with me about it. And I'm just like, dude, if you wanna be the whore, just go ahead and just, 
I'm sure you probably were promiscuous in the past and now you've got some sort of redemption and thinking about this Mary Magdalene character, fucking go with it, dude, because I wasn't that person. I'm not that person and I don't give a shit. And that's how I am with that. I mean, I know what that symbol, what the symbolism is of Mary Magdalene and it's, most people don't understand it and there's a whole bunch of avatars of Sophia, which are Mary Magdalene's. So there's, they're everywhere. There's 144,000 of them. So uh, there's plenty of room for everybody to be a mythical character, okay? Anyways, but people want to know, I mean, like, like they say, well, I want to be this or I want to be that, but why? Because this job is not easy that I have. This is not an easy job. I mean, um, having to do this, having to talk to people, I put myself out there a lot. You know, I don't get to just go and be the be the person that I was before if I go to church or if I talk to people, you know, um, I, I don't get to just be the person before where I was just kind of like a sleeper before I just kind of listened and um, took notes and remembered everything and you know later on would kind of dissect it and figure out what I thought of it but now you know it's it's time for me to start speaking up because I understand and I have this you know this Isaiah 6 8 where it's like boom everything came together for me and it was like okay let's do it then and um, like for instance you know I was I mean this person's probably gonna see this video but I'm you know in the in the spirit of upfrontness um, you know, we're at this restaurant that I know is involved with this human trafficking. And, you know, I, I just like, I just let people know, like, yeah, I'll go to lunch with you, but I just want you to know, like, I don't like this. I don't like this place. I will go here, but I know that these people are involved in human trafficking and I don't like to give these people money. Well, it's new owners. No, they're all the same community. This place changes businesses or changes business changes hands all the time. It's all the same people. I know for a fact, the first girl I investigated was murdered from here and all this different stuff. So I'm just like, you know, they're involved in human trafficking and all kinds of prostitution rings and stuff and the, with, with the police department. So I'm, I'm just, I have my own. <laughs> I'm not gonna so we get done eating and he's like so now does your opinion of this place change that you eat in here well fuck no no I'm sorry this food is not gonna make me change my perception on human trafficking and <laughs> come on and the fucking corrupt underbelly of the town that I live in so I was like no and then so I started to give him ex you know some explanation as to like why this would not change my perception on what I think about these people, you know, of these people. And, um, he, and his response was, cause I, you know, I have a lot of proof of, um, for instance, the, the, um, people, so a lady that I know got paid to drive a young girl from Argentina. It was a fresh sex trafficking slave who had just been freshly imported over to a gated community called the lakes here in town where a bunch of youth pastors or church pastors and a youth pastor were get sodomized by her. They, they like to get sodomized by these young girls. And so, and this is a big church in town. And so, you know, I know this is going on. I know this is real. Um, they're using the golf course for human trafficking and prostitution and all this crazy shit. They've actually killed people. Like a guy got broke in there, got the discs, got the information. They sh the sheriff shot his friend in a fucking tree, okay? And then they he took the disc somewhere else, call 47 on your side news, and then right after that, they got a phone call from the sheriff saying, hey, if you don't bring that tape, bring that disc over, it was a hard drive, turn it over, then you're gonna end up like your friend. And that was it, it was 47 on your side news, which is like a news company around here you're supposed to call, like, you know, oh, we're on your side, everybody. <laughs> yeah, right, that's bullshit, ain't nobody on our side from the news, okay? And, um, and they, I mean, they just called these people that run this golf course, like, just like that, and had it done. And you can search alien activity in golf courses. I do not think it is alien activity, but there is something suspicious going on, and I know what it is. It's it's this uh, monarch mind control. And so, um, and, I mean, there's a house on the golf course that has a pantry, and it has a pink wall, and you push the wall open, and it takes you underground into the sex slave. Um, like, it's like a, it's like a sex room. It's like pink, and they have, like, TVs everywhere where there's porn playing all the time and then like big bowls of condoms and I don't even care if people want to have crazy sex parties and have a crazy sex parties to each his own I'm not here telling anybody what to do but um like you can't use my mind, mind control sleeves can't do that uh you can't use human trafficking can't use little girls and little boys you sick fucks you can't do that stuff I'm sorry um and so <clears throat> um that goes underground and they have some of them that live on the golf course in these houses and so it's 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 not cool so I know this if it's going on. So I just start to say a couple of little things like that. I mentioned the, the, the pastors in town and, and he goes, yeah, well, that's why I just try to focus on love. <laughs> I am like, oh, no. What you mean to say is that you try to focus on happy feelings. That's what you mean to say. That's why I just try to focus on happy feelings. That's what people should say when they say that because they are not focusing on love. They are focusing on happy feelings and that is all they care about is their happy feelings. They're not focusing on love because I am focusing on love. This is my love. My love looks like a mother's love. That's what it looks like. I don't care what the fuck it takes to get these girls out of the ground and get, this, get these people shut down in this human trafficking around here. And even people that I work with know people that are doing this, okay? They bring these girls in. Like, I mean, 
all everybody around here they kind of like know about it but everybody's so afraid to do anything because they're afraid of the mexican drug cartel so they don't do anything about it okay well i'm not that i'm not that person i'm not afraid like what are we here for if we're not here to do something what are we fucking here for if we're not here to do something about this stuff if we could focus on love that's why i just try to focus on love you know oh wonderful let's go to tea you know no they ain't no damn tea man they ain't no fucking tea in hell don't you see what's going on like 27 million children disappear in one year either that's a fucking lie and the people at my church and the people on the news and the people in the human trafficking and polaris Project are all liars and they're all a part of it or they really did disappear and only 250,000 bodies were recovered where are the rest of the bodies okay so we have all this shit shit is going on if yeah, people want to focus on love, all the new agers, let's just focus on love. Well, I'll tell you what, what should I tell these girls to focus on when they're being shot up with heroin um, and they're being traded and they're being sold? Um, what should I tell them to focus on? Because you've been focusing on love and it's not helping them. These girls aren't being helped by people focusing on love. I'm sorry. It's not, I'm, not, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's not, it's not helping. It's not working. So everybody wants to focus on love and, and like look down at me because I'm focusing on this ugliness that people don't want to look at, but I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it. I was sent to do something about it. I wasn't chosen. I was sent. I was sent to do something about it. Okay. It's real. It's not about good and evil or anything like that. It's about what's right and fucking wrong. What's, what's proper and what's improper. Okay. You do not take little boys and girls and sell them to these sick fucks and actually like mind control these fucking kids into thinking these people are their gods and shit. Like they do crazy stuff. Like you wouldn't even believe it. These chicks go out and they sell them to these men for the night and these women don't even know what they are. They think they're like fucking married. They think they're like, that they're in love with this person. They don't even know this person. This is like the dollhouse. Okay. United States of fucking Terra. You need to understand like the depth of this type of trauma based mind control. And so the new agers, I mean, they're really into like, just like, they want to focus on love because they think that's going to bring love to them, but it's not, it's a smoke screen. It's a blinder. It's a lie. Um, and, um, and everybody is like this everywhere. They just want to focus on love, focus on love. And that's the spell. That's really like the trick, um, is the love bombing is the focusing on the love so that people won't, you know, look at the real problem. Um, that is in each one of us and in our in the air it's, it's it's in the air that we're in it's in this frequency it's in our density it's in the radio waves it's in our mind waves it's in our heart pulses it's in our it's in in our fiber of every part of our being so we have to learn how to control it because all these chakras are opening up with people all these vortexes in the planet are opening up we're starting to commune and 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 get actual like enlightenment particles from the heart of the galaxy which is you know there are blue apples that we get these uh, christos awakening of our pineal gland that's why we light up the christmas tree because it's you know the pine and so we're getting all this stuff so a lot of people i think are um are getting a little jumbled up because um the they're they are manifesting but then i think like i do this video and, like people manifesting negatively because they don't even understand that they're like opening up and that they're starting to uh, you know to understand things but at the same time people are trying to open up and understanding things and they're almost blinded by the light that's what i have found a lot of the new agers seem to be blinded by the light and um and I think that's uh, the, the trick of the light is um, you get the light and then you're blinded by it and you think you have it, the truth, or you think you have it, but you have to go through the light and then past it to see what's really behind it and, um, and uh, what is really behind it. <laughs> but um, and so I want to talk about that. So I guess I talked about that and the spell of ISIS and money and currency and the laws of attraction and the new age is focusing on love all the time, which is just like really bonkers because love isn't always, love is a choice. That is something that I learned from the people that the church that kicked me out. And I learned a lot from that church. And I, I will continue to share things that I learned from that church, Radiant, but um, which is the Illuminati Church of Visalia Radiant Church. Radiant, they named it after Moses' radiant glow, which is his illumination. Hello, that's like the Illuminati Church. Um, and um, that, I, you know, that's one thing I did learn, though, is that love is a choice. Like, love doesn't always look like the way people think it looks. You know, sometimes it looks harsh or sometimes it looks cold or sometimes it looks scary. Or sometimes it looks, you know, punishing or, or disciplinary. You know, it's not always your fuzzy feelings of love. Those are feelings. Those are emotions. I can give myself any of love emotion I want. You know, like you say, oh, I want that person because I love them. Well, what do you mean? That, that feeling that you get when you're around them? Because that's your brain your chemicals, your mind, however much you think you love someone else is how much that's your feeling. That's your love inside you that you're feeling. Someone else isn't giving you that feeling. You're giving it to yourself. Some people say, well, one day we're going to laugh about this. Well, why not? Why not now? Why, why wait? You know, any feeling that's your state of mind. Like you say, oh, I want this car. Why? Because you want the way it's going to make you 
feel. Oh, I want this man or this woman. Why? Because you want the way it's going to make you feel. Well, you can make yourself feel that way right now. You can close your eyes. You can say, what is the feeling I'm going to get when I actually get it? What am I, what am I going to see? What's it going to feel like? What am I going to, what am I going to touch? What am I going to smell? And really get a picture of you in this and do a visualization technique and give yourself that feeling right now. Then you're more likely to actually attain that item or attain that thing that you want because you're actually feeling the, um, you don't feel the, the need for it. It's actually something that you, you, you can understand that you're doing it for yourself and then those things will follow. They say, you know, like get in line and everything else will follow. It's kind of like that. Once you understand um, that those things, that you, those are real feelings that you're getting, then your needs and your wants and your desires kind of start to change and fall in line a little bit more too because then you start to understand a little bit more, maybe want a little bit less, if that makes sense. But um, so however much you know you love someone is also how much you can hate someone. You know, and I'm just kind of going off on a random rant because I haven't done a video in so long, but uh, however much you love someone, that's how mad you can get at them. You know, because those are your feelings. That's your capacity. It's kind of like bipolar disorder. Like every time someone goes further out, they never go back. They never take a step back. It's like progressive. You know, they like they go further out and every time their um, symptoms get like longer and worse in the intervals. So it's kind of, it's almost like that in a way when you think about it because it just gets like more and more combined and, and um, more severe, I guess. So, um, so we're talking about the, you know, talking about love and um, the feelings and different, I'm just trying to get on track here. Um, so, um, that's what I, that's cause that's how, how I think about love. You know, we're not we're not necessarily responsible. That's what I was gonna say. Is love is a choice. So you have to understand that love is a choice. I mean, you know, we love our kids all the time, even when we're disciplining them or we're doing things we didn't want to do. You know, we're loving them, but even though it doesn't look doesn't look like hugs and kisses. You know what I'm saying? That's just hugs and kisses. That's affection. That's something else. You know, so um, I think it's important for people to understand that and um, to know that. Um, a mother's love, you know, put it this way. If someone tried to hurt my daughter, they would definitely experience the love for my daughter through me, for my daughter through me. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that will manifest in, in my severity to them on how they treated my child. That's a mother's love. You know, even a protector, you know, a husband or a wife. Sometimes that love doesn't always look the way people think it looks. Sometimes it looks like jealousy when someone's trying to protect somebody from something else maybe they don't understand or they don't see and it looks like jealousy. So people don't really, really understand love. I, I, we call it dark matter. That's how much we don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? So um, we don't even understand why a magnet sticks to the fridge really. So how can we even understand something like this? It's so unseen and so un powerful at the same time but um so anyways <clears throat> um uh, getting into more of this um the that that christos and that's part of that that um heart chakra awakening is when you realize you know what true love really is um and that's why i like i really enjoyed the movie uh, maleficent because it shows sophia which is maleficent is obviously sophia and the girl is the beast you know obviously and um uh you know basically it's, it's showing that the, the real true love is a mother's love, you know, and the protectors, the guardian. And uh, so I thought that that was a, a really good illustration of that. It was very well done um, in the story of um, Sophia and the, and the king and all this different stuff like that. So, but, um, so that's why I also wanted to go briefly into, I was, I watched like a five hour long documentary um, that David Icke did, you know, cause I work from home. So I sew and stuff like that. And, um, I just kind of crank it and we'll listen and I listen to it. I don't, you know, how I feel about David Icke and, um, and you know, David Icke has my phone number. He has my home phone number. Like if he wanted to call me, he could call me. Not a lot of people have my like, private number, but he has it. He could call me if he want. Frank Manzan has it. He can talk to Frank and get it from Frank as well. Um, but I have not heard from him. And, um, the thing is, is, um, you know, I, I hope that um, that Arizona Wilder was programmed to answer his questions to discredit him. You know, I hope that that's what happened. I hope that he's not a part of this. The one thing that I do understand is that David Icke, Jordan Maxwell, and I think Alex Kohler and a group of other men used to meet in San Francisco. And a Scottish Rite Freemason family that I lived with also used to have these meetings in San Francisco where we would go on shopping trips and they would go to like Bohemia Grover and do their, their meetings in San Francisco. They're Masons. And I lived with that family from Scotland. And... Um, they used to meet in San Francisco and he was saying that, um, that they, that he was mad at David Icke because they had agreed to not come out with the information until a certain time. So I thought that was an interesting point for him to make. Just interesting. Um, and, uh, so I, 
I'm holding out hope for David Icke. I really hope that um, he is who he says he is, um, you know, and um, he says so much interesting information. Um, and he's he is letting out a lot of truth and a lot of very important um, points and correlations and, and things like that. So I definitely think it's worth, even if you don't like David Icke, to, to really watch that five-hour video. I'm so sorry that I don't remember the name of it, but it's like five hours long. It's like a thousand commercials. So um, if you can find it, that's what it is. It's uh, got a lot of pictures and they talk about the goddess worship and all this stuff like that. So you can tell that these people like really, when the men talk about these topics, right? I like it because it's so funny because whenever they talk about the phallic symbol or anything like the men who do these like lectures are always like, oh, it's disgusting. Oh, it's penis. Oh, it's Nimrod's penis. Oh, God. You know, like, I, and it just cracks me up. It's like, oh, it's, it, it's a vagina, you know, or like they say all this crazy shit. And I'm like, every, whenever I'm like, these people act like they're celibate. They act like they never had sex before. Like, why is it so gross to represent creation? Why? What is the problem? What's the problem? What is the problem that it's so bad to represent creation? Like, when did a penis become like, like the Tower of Terror? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell is going on that they want people to be so shut off and not understanding of that and so put off by it? I mean, a lot of the Christian people too, they always so disgusting and oh, this is a penis and this is represents that and this well, I mean, here we are. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, whatever. But um, I, I think it's interesting in how much these church pastors and stuff like that, they act like they hate sex and everything. And I remember when I was younger, and I used to always think when I would sit in church, like whenever the men would sit there and tell us all how we're supposed to act and live and everything, and I would think these all these men look the same when they have sex. 